FRC is a robotics competition where teams of high school students make a robot from scratch to compete in that year's specific game. These robots are no joke. They weigh 125 pounds and move super fast. This is the story of just one FRC team and their quest to become Ontario District Champions. Team 1310 is not the best team in Ontario. We aren't even the best team in Toronto. But somehow, even when so much goes so wrong, we can still do something amazing. District Provincial Championships. We've been here before and last time, well, it didn't go great. So much has changed since then though. We have a much better strategy team, but the Notorious PID, our current robot, is statistically much worse than 21 Pylons, our 2023 robot. In its time, it was about 20 ranks higher in Ontario than this robot was going into the district championships. We're not giving up though. Every decent robot has a chance to take a deep run through playoffs because of alliance selection. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. First, let's start with how this event works, because it's a little different from the qualifying events. Because there's so many teams, first decided to put 50 into the science field, and another 50 into the technology field. The rest of the event plays pretty similar to a normal competition. Qualification matches decide the rankings, teams pick other teams to be on an alliance, and then playoffs happen. Whoever wins their field gets to go to Provincial Finals, where they then play the winner of the other field in order to be crowned Ontario Provincial Champions. As with all FRC games, each match is a 3v3 matchup, where the winning alliance is decided by points. The main scoring piece this year is the Note, a foam orange ring that gets placed into either the Amp or the Speaker. If you place two notes into the Amp and choose to Amplify, you get two and a half times more points when scoring into the Speaker for a whole 10 seconds. At the end of the game, robots can climb a chain for even more points. Just like a lot of FRC games where they have an end game where you climb something, or drive up a ramp, or do whatever this is. Now that you know the game, you need to know about our robot. But instead of explaining it, I'm going to assume that you've already watched our Centennial and North Bay videos. And even if you haven't, you'll get it pretty quickly. It's not that hard to understand the fundamentals. No goes in here, no goes out there, arm gets the shooter into position for those two things. Now let's talk about our quals, which start off okay. The robot at least works in auto and then manages to score a note in the end. We ended the match with only 48 points, but it was still a win somehow. The match after that goes pretty much the same way. Not tons of points, but it's still a win. Then we go to a terrible three loss streak because honestly we just aren't that good. Here are some key points on why this robot isn't quite working. 1. This robot was finished and ready to program about three days before our first competition. Meaning in total, the programmers have had only about 15 to 20 days with the robot. Which is just not enough for this game. Here's a comprehensive list of all the things the programmers had to do this season. So, yeah, I wouldn't be too surprised if they didn't have a lot of time to tune the shooting. 2. This thing breaks constantly. We don't know exactly why, it seems like a mix of maintenance issues and general lack of professional build quality, but this thing just does not want to stay in one piece. 3. It's just not that fast. This one has nothing to do with something not working, it's just that a lot of stuff has to move in order to intake and shoot. And those things don't move very fast. This one is also a product of us making the decision to not only have two arms, but also not have two intake rollers, instead of opting for just one. We made this decision because our prototyping took so long that we straight up did not have any time to try more stuff. What we really should have done is look at any other team's robot and see that it always has two intake rollers and start from there, because this game piece is actually really forgiving if you use what people have found to work. After that loss streak, we get an alliance with 40-39, so it's a free win by 52 points. Match starts in three, two, one, crescendo! All right, and starting 
autonomous period on the blue side. We've got three autos running smoothly, shooting notes super quick. 4039 still just shuffling notes back and forth over the entire field to make sure that 1310 can just stay in their corner and shoot and shoot and shoot and score. And we've got a score coming up right here. The Blue Knights takes it. And after that, we win again because we're so cool and because the robot actually works for the whole match. Okay, that was a calm before the storm. Joey gave us the thumbs up and now we're gonna have some action out here on the field. Keep that area too. They are looking and staring at it. Bingo, they do eventually score and put that up on that speaker. We are at one minute left. Red Alliance 34, Blue Alliance 46. There's another shot in the air and a no ghost flying for their partner. Spawn up, 16, 62 up. And they're still shooting. Okay, I've got a score for you. Three, two, one. Red. Red Alliance, wow. One point differential on that. Red Alliance 59, Blue Alliance 58. They got the competition points. The only hiccup is when we don't climb at the end, but it was just that the timer stopped before we climbed, meaning that nothing actually broke. And then we start losing again, which is a real shame because this auto is perfect. We get one two, and three notes into the speaker, and our awesome Alliance partner, Chargers, gets two into the amp. Things go really well as we execute a really cool passing strategy, but then we hit a snag. Our arm stops working. This is a major issue because the arm is crucial for moving our intake into position. Without it, we can't pick up the stash of notes that we were planning to score while amplified. This is really frustrating. There are so many points just sitting there waiting to be scored. This happened to just being a cable unplugging, so we reinforced the connection and kept on going. But that's not what cost us the match. No, it's much dumber than that. You see, we had forgotten to fix the bumpers in between competitions, so they had to be taped up as you can see in these videos. The problem was with our climb at the end here, where we think the robot is up and climbing, but a piece of tape from our bumpers is touching the ground, so it doesn't count as climbing. It's only two more points if we climb than if we park though, so it's probably not going to make a difference. Damn it. And the next match isn't even better. We forgot to tighten the bolts keeping the tread of our wheels on, so it happened to dig into an already damaged piece of carpet and it just tore it apart. The next match is also affected by this because of the sheer volume of gunk that was stuck in our swerve bomb. The match after that goes great, but it doesn't really matter because the other alliance was just better than us. The last match is at least a win, but at this point it can't boost our average high enough for a good ranking. We should be done. We should be gone. We're 39th. Statistically, only the top 24 teams can play, and realistically, you only got a good chance if you're in the top 30 to 35. An alliance selection would have to be wild for us to get picked. But you know what? We still had cards left to play. We could still convince someone that we were worth being in their alliance. But we were picked by Alliance 2, Makeshift, and Waffles. I cannot express how insane this is. Waffles and Matrix were by far the best robots on this field. This was insane. We were so going to win this. And we lost the first match, didn't we? Here we are in the technology division. Upper bracket, round one, match three, Alliance two and Alliance seven are facing off. Alliance two first, their robot's name is Apollo. On that side, and they cross the center line, and there looks like they are waiting in line. To, uh, to, we got four seconds, two blue robots are up. One, it's a, one more second, there we go. Takes that job well done. Alliance seven with 107. That was close. That was tight. Red Alliance number 103. That's Alliance number two. Job well done. 5409, 75, 58, 1285. We needed to swap to a new playstyle. 
we decided to start playing defense instead of going for scoring. We have our new Swerve modules which are super good for defense, so hopefully we're good enough to lower the opponent's score by a decent amount. And there we go. Worked like a charm. We won by 22 points. Number nine in red bumpers, we got Alliance four in blue bumpers. It's Alliance two. Autonomous period with a lead of 12 points. That's a lot of low and high in that speaker. It goes 40 39 for your blue lines. Trying to shoot high, they don't quite get it. Bounces off the back of the driver station. One more note for Villanova Nova Wirecats trying to go up. No application for the collision between those blue lines. Are off underneath the blue stage. 13 10 defense holding up Villanova Nova Wirecats. They're trying to go look for another note. Merge Robotics gonna keep shooting. Two red robots underneath the blue stage. And then we go right back into the stressed territory. We only won that match by one point. Defense is pretty clearly not getting us to the end. We're in the lower bracket and cannot afford to lose another game. We were ready to keep playing, but there was a controversial decision made. Our captains in makeshift robotics called in a backup team, our shark boys in sparkling age two. We're still on the Alliance, but are currently not playing until they decide to swap us in again. This is usually not an issue, but our robot didn't actually have any mechanical issues that would prevent us from playing. In Rule 10.6.3, Alliance captains may elect to replace one of its robots due to a mechanical or software issue that prevents the robot from competing effectively. So we probably shouldn't have been able to do this, even though the play was allowed and approved by the referees. Nonetheless, we keep cheering, and it looks like Sparkling H2O is doing way better. They take the Alliance all the way to a technology field win. First Ontario Provincial Championship 2024, starting in 3, 2, 1, crescendo! Blue Alliance gonna look to stage the comeback. One note already in the blue amp. They're gonna look for another one. Start getting ready for that amplification cycle. The red amp is already ready. Cybercast put the first one in. Amplification is started. Cybercast put up the second shot. It's up to that it. blue alliance. Not going to be there waiting for them when they get there. Waffles lining up. They shoot up into that speaker. They're up, and they score. Their alliance partners makeshift join them up there. A blue flag get waved for that. The Cyber Cavs put another one up into that Red Alliance speaker. Uh, those high notes are flying as we only have seven seconds remaining in the match. Cyber Cavs are up. Will 2056 join them? We have the harmony over on the blue. They tried to beat OP Robotics and Cyber Cavs in finals one, but it didn't really matter. The strategy wasn't perfect and neither was the execution. So they beat our Alliance 128 to 71. I don't exactly know how this happened, Something must have gone wrong on our side. 71 is a super low score for this alliance. And there is a spicy triple climb at the end though, so that's something, I guess. The alliance saw how badly things were going, and figured we should switch it up. They thought our defensive robot might be more effective. We might be able to stop the other alliance from scoring, giving us a chance to pull off a win even with a lower point total. The alternative was to send in the sharks and probably lose just as bad. Weirdly, a mix of the two happens. We do manage to put the opposing alliance's score under 110, all the way to 106. That's a super doable score for this alliance to beat. But then Makeshift's code does something really weird. It sends their army to the ground, breaking them for basically the rest of the match. A note gets stuck in Waffles' robot, making them not able to pick up another one. We start playing some offense, but there's just no shot we can come back after that. Our fate was fully sealed, and the other alliance became provincial champions. Honestly though, by this point in the competition, all of us were just happy to be there. It was almost comical how everything seemed to go wrong at every turn. So, so what did we learn from this experience? 
Was it that we needed to focus on simplicity so that the robot would be more robust? Or maybe that we needed to manage our time better so that the programmers could have more coding opportunity? Eh, who knows? You know what? It sounds like a skill issue to me.